Communications, Google account, call it only child, left there, Poznajesz gościa? Gość cię nie widzi. Po prostu nie widzi, nie? Zamknij oczy i pójdź sobie po mieście swoim. Po mieście, w którym mieszkasz. Z zamkniętymi oczami. I teraz pomyśl sobie, że jedziesz do Sudanu i nie widzisz. Żeby było jeszcze ciekawiej, do tego gościa, u którego jestem, napisał Anglik. Wyobraźcie sobie, że ten Anglik podróżuje, nie wiem, już masę krajów odwiedził i podróżuje sam. Nie byłoby w tym nic dziwnego, gdyby nie fakt, że jest osobą niewidomą. Nie to, że niedowidzącą, tylko niewidomą. Please stand. Come on. Oh, okay. So there is some sand and cement. I know. To the left. Yeah. To the left. Mm -hmm. Pretend it's like the beach. Slow the step. I teraz idziemy sobie z chłopakami w miasto, żeby coś zjeść i żeby żeby po prostu zobaczyć trochę miasta. To jest niesamowite w ogóle jak tony. Tu stówka, please. Please, please. please. Stówka, tu. Tu mam złotówka. Tu złotówka, please. Jedną złotówkę, proszę. Ja tutaj uczę Islama, jak się, jak się porozumieć po polsku. To jest salsa. To jest small cup. Take a sip. Take a sip. Is uh, like you know it's the juice a, from the salad? You know, it's a spicy. <laughs> it's a spicy. Co teraz będziemy spożywać? Uliczne jedzonko. To mi się właśnie podoba i tego mi brakuje w ogóle w Europie. Takich spotkań rodzinnych, kumpelskich, gdzie ludzie po prostu sobie siedzą, razem jedzą i się tak jakby po prostu socjalizują. Co to za słowo? So, so, socjalizacja. To socjalizacja, dokładnie. Dokładnie o to chodzi. I nie wiem, gdzie to zniknęło. Słuchajcie, to spróbujmy, co? Bierzemy mózg. Próbujemy. O kurde. Wiem, to będę mądrzejszy. Makes you smart. <laughs> Makes you very smart. Taki gąbczasty. Taki w ogóle delikatny bardzo. Gdybym nie wiedział, że to mózg, to bym nie powiedział, że to mózg. Jest. Ale nie wiem, co to jest. Ofozłam na kielbach, a ty grida. What is this? One more time. Liver. Never? Liver. You know what you destroy when you drink? What you destroy when you drink? Yes, when you drink alcohol. When you get hurt. Ah, okay, I know. Okay, okay. Montroba. Montroba, delicious. Poznajesz gościa? Gość nie widzi. Po prostu nie widzi, nie? Zamknij oczy i pójdź sobie po mieście swoim. Po mieście, w którym mieszkasz. Z zamkniętymi oczami. I teraz pomyśl sobie, że jedziesz do Sudanu i nie widzisz. Chciałbym wam pokazać tego gościa i pokazać co odpowie, bo dla mnie ten człowiek po prostu bije wszystkie możliwe bariery. Wszystkie dosłownie możliwe. I ja, patrz, porównując do siebie, mam wzrok, jestem sprawny, a ten koleś po prostu polega na ludziach. Dosłownie? Dosłownie. On tak jak on wierzy w ludzi. Bro, so take hand. 
take your hand. The camera is stay something like here. One half meters the camera opposite. Okay. Yeah, we stay here. First, I will describe you in, in, in Polish, okay? Yeah. Moi drodzy, to jest specjalny człowiek, specjalna osobowość, specjalny gość, specjalny podróżnik. To jest Tony. Tony jest Anglikiem, Tony jest osobą niewidomą i podróżuje po świecie. I travel alone and I'm totally blind and I'm also severely deaf in both ears without using hearing aids. Tony, how many countries do you have now on your list, travel list? Um, the official countries from the UN, I've visited 116. 16? Yeah, one six. So, uh, official UN, 116, not official, it's a little bit more. And officially, 136. So, I very light sensitive, sensitive to light. So as a baby and as a young child, I could see or sense shapes. Okay. Black and white shadows. Mm -hmm. And then I got older, my sensitivity to light has got less and less. Now all I can sense is very bright sunlight. So I've been traveling for 20 years um, internationally. Before that, I probably spent three or four years traveling in the UK uh, by myself with a friend. Because when I was 10 years old, I went to a special school for blind children about 400 kilometers from my home. I stayed there for six weeks, eight weeks. And then that's sort of the combination of my dad was in the merchant navy where I was born. So he told me his, sto his travel stories about traveling across Australia in the 1950s Whoa. by train. And it took him eight days and sailing up the St. Lawrence River in Canada. And it sort of excited my imagination of, oh, that sounds good. And then I can when, do it. When I went to school, I wanted to come home to see my mum as much as possible. So when I was 13, 14, I started using buses and crossing streets, learning to take trains. So I had mobility training. So I was able to learn to use a long white cane. So this is only one equipment. Yeah, this is this... my main tool. This, this is for getting, getting about anywhere. So in England, traveling anywhere I go, I use my cane. It allows me to find objects on the ground. So when I'm walking, if I want to cross the street, I can find the, the step down of the curb or there's holes or rubbish or stones. I use my cane to help me find. And when I'm going down steps, I use it in a different technique. So I go out the bus station, get off the bus in Cairo, and I'll ask someone, uh, can you help me get to the metro? Mm -hmm. I want to go to this place or can you get me a taxi? Okay. And then I have to try and negotiate and say the taxis, oh no, it's 50, 50 Egyptian pounds, I 30, 30, 50, 40. And so I have to negotiate. Sometimes it works, sometimes not. Yes, I, I use hostels and I use couch surfing. So I've been couch surfing for 10 years. It's a website where you can find people all around the world and uh, they have a profile, you have a profile and then um, you just send them a message and say, oh, my name's Tony, blah, blah, blah. Can I come and stay with you? And 90% people say yes, because my story is really different. And, and then, yeah, and I've also hosted a few people in the UK. And then sometimes if you can't get a couch surfer or they're busy or it's a work day, and then I stay in a hostel. And very occasionally um, I stayed in Airbnb, but I don't like them so much. Um, and I learned to touch type at school. Uh, speech software. So now I use a program, JAWS, J-A-W-S, and it every time I press a key on the laptop it speaks. So then I can navigate the internet with using the arrow keys, like a sighted person would use the mouse. And um, I can read maybe 85% of websites, um, and I can find people on couch surfing and I can find information about the places I want to visit. The, the only difficulty I have using the internet is booking a flight ticket and, and some websites with graphics. Um, so you are independent? Yeah, I would say I'm about 85% independent. I met uh, a Greek girl, um, a journalist did an, uh, an article about me, mm -hmm. a Greek journalist, and she found it online. 
and um, we got emailed each other for a year, and then I went to Turkey, and then got I've been to Turkey, and they're like neighbours with Greece. I I'll go to Greece, so I said oh, I'm coming to Greece. Do you want to meet up, have dinner? Yeah. So we did, and we talked, and we mm -hmm. liked each other, and and love stories. Yeah. Started. Nine years later, we're still together. <laughs> and she's um, she travels with me sometimes. We've been to the states together, Russia, uh, Slovakia, Hungary. Traveling by myself is the ultimate freedom because I have no responsibility. Yeah. I only have me to worry about, and I can stay in the cheapest basic accommodation with no running water, no toilet, and I kind of like that in a strange way. Um, and I've traveled with sighted friends before, met in Africa, and it's okay, but the problem is when you travel with someone who can see, they tend to ask all the questions and do all the arranging. You sort of meet less people. But when I'm by myself, people think, oh wow, what, what are you doing? It's unbelievable, and they come and talk. So I'm able to meet more people by myself. Most people around the world, a kind, they just want to put food on the table for their family. And I, I'd say the overwhelming experience that I've had around the world in over a hundred countries is positive. People have taken me home and fed me, helped me to my next destination. Um, so really helpful. Really, really positive and really like, really like engaging conversation. They want to know, they want to know why. why. Why do you want to come and see the world if you can't see it? And I tell them, it's about meeting the people and experiencing the culture. And I could stay at home and have a great life in the UK, but I wouldn't learn anything. By going to Africa and living with people in their home and in their villages, I learn how they get water where there's no taps or how they mm -hmm. use the toilet where there's no proper facilities and how they get food and how they grow crops and things. Yes. So the most difficult things for me traveling is finding people I can trust to help me get money, cash machine, and uh, also getting uh, food information in restaurants because I can't read the menus. Some of the most difficult things. And also sometimes finding people to help me with visas uh, can be quite difficult, especially in countries where I don't speak the language, I like Arabic countries or Japan, Russia. Tony w ogóle pisze swoją stronę. Tony prowadzi Facebooka też, Tony, Tony Gills. Pokazuje świat na swój sposób. Pokazuje świat, który, który tak jakby zdobywa przez pryzmat smaku, dotyku, węchu. Coś pięknego. Yeah, Tony, thank you so much. Pleasure, Man. you're very welcome. And see you in Poland. See you, ciao. Tak sobie myślę że ludzi, których poznajesz, tworzą twoją podróż. Nie piramidy, nie muzea i piękne pałace, a ludzie, ich historie. Może już masz ochotę wrócić?